fountain of youth. You guys ready? Here we go. This is Mike Taylor, aka Ballast of Cobra, and on today's video. Wow, I guess that stuff really works. Today we're gonna cover what you can and can't update using direct SQL or HANA SQL statements. But first, for information about me, go to www.battleshipcobra.com. Check out all my Udemy courses, SAP Crystal Reports for SAP Business One and SQL for SAP Business One. If you like this video, like it. If you wanna see more, subscribe. If you want to be notified, join the notification squad and click that bell below. The standard answer for what you can update using an update query from SQL or HANA SQL is nothing. And uh, you can say it will void your SAP warranty, um, especially if you modify any of the system fields. If you go ahead and edit something that's linked to another uh, object or another table, or maybe what you're editing should have, um, you know, do multiple effects, you can cause real issues in your database. So what SAP is trying to prevent is you from editing something that will cause the database to become corrupted. Corruption means, you know, when it tries to load the values, they don't exist, or there's orphaned records, or you try to delete something and it's in the system, and then there's an incomplete record, and you try to pull a list, and then there's some errors. Uh, basically, it's pretty ugly. I've only had one issue with this and I did edit a system file that was, or a system flag that was locked. Um, we ended up paying for it. I made it really clear to the customer. I'm like, bad stuff can happen. And they were like, you know what? Screw it, test it and let's do it. It's so annoying, let's just try it. So we tried it, everything seemed great. All my testing was good. And then down the line in a couple days, uh, there was an error and we ended up having to redo all their documents from that in, uh, you know, reverting to before, redoing all the documents. Like they literally had to redo two, three days worth of work before we even found it out. So something I don't recommend, I have not repeated and it's just not worth it. If you really need to make a change like that, you can use Solution Packager and you can make a new database and then move over your trial balance. If it's that serious, you can do that. Start fresh. It's kind of annoying, but... Uh, that's probably what I would recommend. There are a couple of cheeky system fields that I do not worry about updating. Go to my record. Something like password, view system information, ocrd.password. I know for sure that this does not uh, update or have anything to do with any other tables. So if you want to do an update, you could do it there. Now, if you had B1 up or something and you can make a UDF on the sidebar, um, you can just place it in here and you don't ever have to update system fields. It's only when you want to change like group currency and you're like, oh, on update or the post transaction notification, can I just change group? The answer is no, you can't. So um, that's the type of system stuff you can't change because it links to a whole bunch of other things and it's very important that you don't mess with it. So with these fields like the dead end kind of password one, you can hold control and double click the label and change it to, you know, like whatever, email to, email to, and then you can store that as information there too if you want it. And um, so that one, I don't mind if you use that or SQL update, it won't really, to me, cause any issues. On the sales order, you're gonna have, here if we go to the last one, under, where is it, accounting, order number. So with the order number, this is another system one, order dot or import ENT. I found this sometimes clears itself, but again, this is kind of like a dead end one. I never really think of this as being something I'd be really worried about um, writing to, uh, but that's really kind of, you know, there's a couple of fields where you're sure that nothing is gonna really be a problem. And uh, I don't worry about it all that much in that case, but everything else I don't touch. I don't touch any of these system fields. I don't definitely don't touch any settings. You can't switch payment terms. You can't switch dates with the update. Can't switch anything. Um, so that's why you would need SDK work, C Sharp, DI API stuff, VB.net stuff. If you're using B1 up, you can use the master data, ma master data, master data scheduler 
and you can um, periodically go through and fix up system fields or you can do bulk updates. If you, if you want to do like DTW style uh, updates, yeah, yeah, check out the master data manager. You can also write dynamic syntax that will allow you to switch uh, system settings using the proper objects using C sharp code and dynamic syntax, which you can put into your stuff. So uh, think about B1UP for, for stuff like that. For things that you can update all the time, there's, uh, there's quite a few things you can. So you can use UDOs. So I have here general reason for return. This is a UDO that I just made. So it's a really simple like UDO. Uh, you could see my video, which I'll, I'll uh, put in the cards of the UDO UDT creation. So you say you have a drop down list. You don't want to use valid values. You want to use that link to a table. So what you could potentially do is have it linked to a UDO. The UDO can be placed in the menu. Again, I'm going to go here, reason for return. And then these can be edited. And as far as I care, you can strip them and repopulate them. Say they're supposed to match some table with SAP, or maybe you need to add a couple of different parts from a table or SAP. Um, you could strip those out. They're not going to cause massive issues if they're not there. They don't affect system stuff. They're just there. Um, I would watch out about like dropping that table or anything like that, but just deleting the records from it if you have to do something that way or you know, using using a UDO or even a UDT, which I'll talk about next, um, to store temporary data that you do update to can be a great way to use uh, the, the B1UP macros. So the next thing that you can update is UDTs. So I'm going to make, uh, you, you can make a UDT, user-defined windows. I have a lot of tables here. Example, UDT example. So UDT here code, name, the code's locked, name. Um, this is a little bit different here than the UDT. It's a little more simplified, but you can use this as the basis for a drop down menu as well. So this is great. You could store like code and then have the name be a flexible field that you write to temporarily, or you can write a bunch of code to this, uh, store it temporarily, use it for something. And I'm going to show you an example of how that works. Uh, just thinking back about the UDO too, the UDO can be master data as well. It can be master data like, and it can also be document like. So you can do your own things in there too. Okay, so I have my example here and I have my SQL server. <clears throat> Databases, new query. So I'm going to just copy all this. So here's my example in SQL. Delete this. So we could delete all ex uh, delete all records from example. Delete it. Remove those three rows. You can go back. Tools. Windows. UT example. It's empty. Then you can go insert into example. Oh one number one number two number three. And you can just run this insert. Uh, this is not going to cause any issues as far as what I can see or what I have done uh, in order to populate these fields or to use them for other things. So doing those is pretty standard and whatever you need or whatever you can think of to store those as settings, as some piece of information you need to store temporarily or whatever, you can use a UDT for those too. I don't even think drop downs is a big issue either using you, when you use a UDT off of this. Uh, it's, I think it's going to be fine. The other thing that's really quite easy to update and it's totally fine in all cases, I think, is a UDFs. All your sidebar UDFs, obviously I'm using B1UP here. Um, so I've placed all of my relevant UDFs. I hate the sidebar. I think this is horrible. It, every All this information is out of context and it's useless over here. You need to get B1UP and you need to put all your fields where you can use them in the actual forms. But uh, once these are placed, even when they're placed using SAP, uh, using B1UP, you can still update them. And there's not a real problem with updating them or changing them based on whatever. Uh, in particular, the post-transaction notification is how I would normally do that. So let's go in and go Business One, Programmability, Start Procedures, scroll down. 
look for a transaction notification. I totally went by it. Here it is right here. Post transaction notification. So post transaction notification, it allows you to put little pieces of code in here. So what I have is uh, the post, the, the transaction notification, I have a whole video on this too, I'll post that. You, you have a transaction notification that's before you commit the data to the, to the database. So that'll, that allows you to validate and block. And again, the video covers that. And then you have post transaction notification, which is after you have committed it to the database, it'll run this store procedure and then you can run through code here. So SAP actually says, add your code here. So you can run these things. And as long as you're updating things that you can update, then it shouldn't be a problem. So I say, if transaction type is A and object type is 17, which is a sales order, begin update already are set a UDF with the doc number. I like to have the UDF here populated so that as the sales order is copied to a delivery and the delivery is copied to an invoice, you have the reference of what sales order it came from right there. So I'm just copying the document number from the document into that UDF. And it's really simple and straightforward, but I use this a lot. A lot of people want to have their invoices and they want to have the you know base doc or the base order where it came from, or they want to have you know the delivery with where the order that it came from too. So you can use this setup and this will not cause any corruption, this will not cause any issues, and I don't see this as a problem in any way. So other ways that you can update fields are, I'll just close this, close these guys, the data transfer workbench. So you could look at the data transfer workbench. I have a video on this too. There's like, you could do basically everything through this. This will allow you to update system fields, no problem, as long as they can be updated, obviously. Close that. You can use B1UP's Master Data Manager. B1UP. Oh, Master Data Manager. So any of these, um, you know, item Master Data Manager, Scheduler, or the Scheduler, uh, all of these different things. These can do a lot of the things that DTW can do really quickly. So you can, you know, go into document master data. I have another video on that as well. So check that out. That can allow you to update system fields. And because you can schedule it, it's really nice. You can have it, you know, if one part of the document adjusts and you need to change the due date or something, you can have that running in the background with an SQL query to calculate the date. And then the master data manager will go in and do the update in the background properly through the DI API without the chance of uh, corruption. The last thing, and this is what I did uh, a video on last day, is data import export, import from Excel. And this is a great way to update or import um, certain objects from Excel. So you can export to Excel, make your changes, and then re-import them back to update existing um, methods and update existing objects inside of SAP. So there's another way to do it properly without doing updates. So to summarize, you cannot update system fields that are connected to other tables. And as a general rule, I would say don't update any system fields. I gave a couple examples of ones that I know were completely dead-ended, but you can work around it and you can add your own UDFs, you could add your own UDTs, UDOs and everything. And those can be updated using whatever you want. Don't delete the tables, but you can delete all the records and you can reinsert stuff. You can use those as a basis for a UDF dropdown. So say you wanted, again, to match a shorter list of items or a shorter list of warehouses, you can say when a new warehouse is added, strip out the table of list of the combo box and then reset it with a new list, however you want to do it with an update in a post-transaction notification or something like that. So those are not risky. Those will not cause issues or corruption. And worst case scenario, you just delete the table and you make a new one. Um, but it's not going to cause fundamental corruption in your SAP Business One data that would cause SAP to be alarmed. Thank you guys so much for checking out my videos. I really appreciate it. I have cards in the upper right hand corner. Check out other videos. If you could watch some of my other videos, check it out. I have tons of SAP Business One content. I want you to get the most out of it. So like, subscribe, click that notification bell. I hope you have an awesome week. Bye for now.